loading, um, I'm going to talk to you about what happens in a cases where you can or should not do hair transplant. So a patient comes in and he is in his um, 20s and he's already showing Norwood 7. Should you do hair transplant? Um, and, or a woman comes and she's so, she has diffuse um, pattern hair loss that you can't do hair transplant on her. You can do other modalities, but these are other things that can help them um, uh, achieve better look. So one is scalp micropigmentation. There's a lot of talk about it. It's a medical tattooing. The dots are created on the scalp to look like shaved heads. Um, and, and most often it works well on patients who like to shave their head. They, it cannot be on someone who has the hair, want a hair growing in the back and then tattoo on the top. It has to be shaved everywhere because otherwise this will be a, a flat and this will be a three-dimensional. So it has to be in someone who is going to shave head all the time. Um, it could be also like this image, right? It, it gives that illusion of shaved head, buzzed hair. However, we have to keep in mind that uh, not everybody is skillful in doing scalp micropigmentation. Doing tattoo on the skin is different than doing a scalp, and a pigment kit could uh, migrate or change the color, and then a patient ends up with something, either blue scalp or big dots. So don't just think that it's easy, anybody can do tattoo, we can just pick up and do scalp micropigmentation. Um, it could be used very well as a complementary procedure, either in camouflaging the scars or adding visual density to the um, thin hair. The second thing is um, you can use, so we have a scalp mark, micropigmentation with the hair pieces. People, when you talk about hair pieces, they think hair pieces is something like this. Everybody can see it. But actually, hair pieces today are so subtle that you can't tell who has a hair piece and who doesn't. Uh, when it's done properly. It can have um, something called a skin front, lace front. They can swim. They are made with natural hair. For someone who wants instant hair, who is not a good candidate for hair transplant, they may be a good candidate for hair piece. So um, find someone in your area and you can refer to and work with that person. Because sometimes people would have, let's say, loss of temporal point and a hair piece on the top does not look right. So hair transplant can be a good complementary procedure where you can restore the temporal points and they can wear a hair piece and match and it looks more natural. So this was a, a, a patient who didn't have a temporal point so he had to style hair forward. Once the temporal points restored, he can wear a different hair piece because he had the hair transplant done 25 years ago, donor area is completely, completely um, destroyed. He can't shave his head, he can't do any procedures. So this is the best option and he's happy. And a third thing to consider is camouflaging products. So there are camouflaging products that you add to the existing hairs um, to create a webbing. It's like a um, fiber that bonds to hair and creates webbing and casts the shed on the scalp or there's a, a, a shadowing that you just kind of powder put on the scalp to decrease the contrast between the hair and the scalp color. You can use it in um, uh, post-transplant. You just have to wait, the patient has to wait until um, healing process is completely, completed. The same thing for hair piece. They can uh, go back and wear hair piece uh, seven days after. They can use the fiber seven days after, after the uh, scabs are, um, healed and, and fall off. Um, it could be a good in someone who is in a transition. Um, Post-operative effluvium can be camouflaged with fibers or um, dermatch and then uh, women with thin hair would love. You will see someone who is devastated, thin hair, you put a powder and they're like magic. However, this has to be washed every day and um, it may be a little bit more maintenance. And then the other thing, in a, sometimes there's a post-operative effluvium in a donor area, and it could be used for temporarily camouflaging that area. And so know that the hair transplant should not be a solution for everything. That there are other solutions. You just have to know what is available and how to make a judgment. Sometimes it's better referring patients to do something else 
telling that surgery is not a good option than to do a surgery and, and then, for example, someone who's Norwood 7, you, you transplant a little bit of hair here, now they can't shave head, they can't do anything, so it's not fair to the patient.